Hi. Another type of operation that we talked about were block and focal statistics. And you can see with my DEM right here, under my spatial analyst tools, we can run block statistics and focal statistics. Now, if I move my mouse over here, this partitions data into non-overlapping blocks and computes statistics for those each of those blocks. Or if we look at focal statistics, it'll focus it around a, a particular center and move one over. And so we'll look at our block statistics first, so we can look at an example here. So I've got my input raster, which is my DEM, and I'm going to run a 3x3 three three rectangle of the mean. Actually, I'm, instead of 3x3, three three, I can run 7x7, seven seven, just so we see an example of what one looks like before versus the end. Now, these neighborhoods could be different. It could be a circle, an annulus, which is um, a circle or a ring, essentially, a wedge and a regular or some type of weight. Now, I'm going to run this. And let's see what this looks like. You know, change the values a little bit here. But now when I zoomed in, what, what did I essentially do? You can see this data from the, the block statistics are a lot more coarse. Now, if I check it, what did I do? All I did was for every 7 by 7, so I ran 7 by 7, I averaged those up, and now that value is going to be just the average an average, an average. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, that's a good question. And one of the reasons why I may want to do it is sometimes I collect uh, data at a more coarser scale. So I might have this land cover data that doesn't match up. So if I'm running this really fine data, fine scale data with coarser data, it's, it's not going to work out. Or otherwise, if I'm working with statewide data and I have one meter resolution, well, it's going to be a really large data set. So I'm, I don't want to say I'm degrading my data a little bit, but I'm creating it for something that's a, a little bit more manageable. So I've decreased the size of this particular data set uh, so it can match up. But you can see that the general trend looks the same. Or if I'm just doing an analysis, and you can see the trend, the trends generally look the same, but now it's a lot more coarser. And so if I'm working with a data set for the entire state or matching up or doing raster analysis with data at a poor or coarser scale, I'm able to match up these elevations where I just average these up instead of worrying about any types of overlaps or whatnot. Now, the other type of operation that I have is called focal statistics. And I like these focal statistics. And one in particular I like is uh, variety. In the past, we've done some we've done some analysis with deer vehicle collisions. And we looked at the idea that deer vehicle collisions occur in areas where there are, um, there's uh, more diversity, you know, where there's uh, forest with water, with urban, where all those meet, and there's more potential for deer vehicle collisions. And so in this particular tool, I'm gonna run to focal statistics, my input raster, I'm gonna look at my land cover, and I'm gonna look at for this particular land cover, I'm going to run a, say, a 7 by 7. Now, this focus is about a focus. Instead of a block, me moving 7 by 7, and then another 7 by 7, and then another 7 by 7, I'm going to look at some focus and look at the 7 by 7 around it, using 7 by 7 as the middle, and move to the next one over, and the next one over, and the next one over, and the next one over. So I'm moving one pixel at a time, with my block statistics, I'm moving one block at a time. And this block is however I dictated. Previously, I dictated a 7 by 7 block. Here, I'm looking at my neighborhood, a 7 by 7 neighborhood. So my neighborhood, my neighbor, my near, is defined as 7 by 7. And in geostatistics, we can define neighborhood however we want, especially things like interpolation where we have cutoffs. Or and so this is going to be cell. We can look at unit types, map units, or whatnot. And instead of calculating the mean, because for land cover, these class of, um, these uh, categorical classifications really mean nothing mathematically, I'm going to look at something called the variety. So within 7 by 7 cells within a particular cell, how many different cells occur without it? How many different classifications? Of those 15 or 16 different classifications that we looked at, how many different classifications are in those 49 within it? And I'm going to run it. And it's pretty interesting because we can see distinct 
and, and explicit patterns with it as well. Might take us a couple seconds to run here. And then here we go. Wow. And now this is what we have here. And so you can see these ones and these twos here. These twos over here mean that there's not a lot of variety. And if I were to uncheck these and uncheck these here, you can see there's not a lot of variety here within. And this is the urban area here. And this is over in uh, northeast, uh, northwest Durham over here. And so there's not a lot of variety. So we wouldn't expect a lot of D vehicle collisions here. Maybe I can change my appearance. Let me see if I can do this. Classify. Okay, yeah, it looks like I'm able to do that real, you know, quickly. So you can see where there's a lot more variety. These dark areas I might highlight where there's more variety. So if I were to zoom in and uncheck these, you can see there's a lot more variety. There's water with these green, dark greens, with these light greens, with these urbans, with some more water over here. So you can see probably the chances over here, this is called the Wildland uh, Urban Interface. The chances of us having a deer vehicle collision are probably gonna be a lot more correlated with these areas here where there's higher variety than others. And what I did was just, I went to one cell, looked at a seven by seven neighborhood and counted the number of different classifications moved over to the next cell, moved over to the next cell, moved over to the next cell. So the resolution of this is going to be better than my block statistics, okay? Because the blocks are going to essentially create brand new pixels, you know, based on mean or variety or whatever we wanted, wanted to do with it. And so this is just a short, short tutorial on the differences between the two. And these are powerful tools. And just make sure they're utilized properly because land cover data uses classifications. You know, classification data is going to be, you know, the values aren't really gonna have a lot of importance. We can't say a 21 is worse or lower than an 82 based on that classification. As, out, as well as we're working with ratio interval data such as uh, elevations, it's hard to take the majority, especially when we're working with you know, six digit precision. There's probably only gonna be one maximum. And so when we look at these values or the number of times something appears, we're not gonna have individual values that occur very often because of the precision that we use for these data.